Howdy, friendarinos. It's October. Wow. It's we got three months left in the year. Are you ready? Are you excited for it? Well, you should be excited for our brand new viewer requested merch, which is I Survived 2020 Meth Jita. This mug right here is going to be your favorite, okay? We have it also in t-shirts and hoodies, which, you know, if you want to pick it up like that, also in a mask, it's a possibility. But I highly recommend the mug format of I Survived 2020. We drink everything out of that, and it's pseudoscientifically guaranteed to potentially alleviate your chances of not surviving. So I've heard through the scientific rumor mill, this cup, pseudoscientifically guaranteed. Okay, 2020, you surviving it, Meth Jita? Odds are you're going to check it out. We'll leave a link in the video description in case you want to pick one of those up. Several people in our Discord recommended that we actually make something like this. So we did, and in case you want it, there you go. And now let's go on, on over to AMD because things are just getting better. We talked about in the previous episode of Hot News about how we were expecting a 15 to 20% gain in the next-gen Ryzen chips, which are going to be called the 5000 series because AMD likes to be weird and skip numbers. Well, what if I told you that now that we have a few benchmarks, it's actually better than that. So the first benchmarks are coming out of the Ryzen 9 5900X. And as you can see here, it is scoring quite high, 27% faster in single threaded performance than the 3800X. 27% year over year performance. But I can hear you saying, oh, Brett, that's a 5900X versus a 3800X. Well, according to the 3900X's single core performance in that, it's 25% better. So that's insane. It's going to be 15% better in multi-threaded performance. This is according to one benchmark, but still a pretty good indicator. CPU Z does a good job of at least showing us where the ballpark is of going to be where this performance is. 27% faster than 3700X, 25% faster than the 3900X in single core, which means it's absolutely going to be faster than a 9900K in single core, which is crazy. We don't know the clock speeds of this yet, but the performance is looking to be quite delicious. But we also have a Ryzen 7 5800X benchmark showing up in Ashes of the Singularity, which beats the 9900K again, as well as the predecessors by quite a large margin. So 16% faster than the 9900K is what the 5800X is looking like, which is just, what? One year. It's been, well, it's been a little bit more than one year. It's been about 15 months, but geez. AMD is showing us what consistent year over year improvement is looking like. However, temper this with your biggest grain of salt because obviously this could just be extra hype. This could be extra fluff. It might not actually be this good, but based on what we're seeing, sweet doggy, this is going to be a good generation. Which, speaking of, you want to know when it's coming out? According to one Osmus who is in the know on these things, apparently Zen 3 is going to be launching October 20th. In one week on October 8th, AMD is going to be having its keynote, which we're going to be live streaming, twitch.tv forward slash UF Disciple, if you want to come join us for that. So we're getting the information October 8th, according to one Osmus, the 58 and 5900X are going to be launching October 20th, with the other chips probably going to launch next year. So if you you want a new 8 or 12 core, these chips might be it for you. But also saying that Navi 2 would likely come out the 15th to the 20th of November, which would be after the consoles, by the way, which means that AMD would break their promise. So, you know, there's that. AMD's messing things up on GPUs, nothing. Okay, we'll talk about the fact that MSI is apparently rolling out new firmware for Zen 3 CPUs on their motherboards, which is just more indication that they're coming sometime soon. And of course, the best motherboard that you would want for the next gen chips is a B450, which is why Asus is announcing the refresh of their models. Rock Strix, Tough Gaming, and Prime Boards all getting an update. And Gigabyte updating the Eurasian Economics Commission with the fact that they're going to have 3060 Ti's coming in hot and heavy. The Aorus Master Gaming Eagle and Eagle. OC being released to the EEC, which likely means that there's some time imminent and probably will launch around the same time as Navi 2. And I just want to say for everybody who's saying that, oh, NVIDIA is scared of AMD, which is why they dropped the 3090. I'm not quite sure of that because it appears that they're holding off the 3080 20 gig and the 3060 Ti as a response, not the 3090. So I'm thinking that Navi 2 is not going to necessarily be the 3090 crusher that we're all expecting it to be. Or I'm not expecting. 
to be, but some people on the internet are. Now let's talk about a few new products that got announced over the past couple of days. MSI teasing their upcoming ultra wide monitor, the Artemis 34.3 CQR 1440p, one millisecond response time, HDR 400 coming in December 2020. I like the refined look on the backside of this. And speaking on the backside, HP is announcing a brand new VR headset on the backside of them saying that their VR headset that they're just now shipping is coming out soon. The Reverb G2 shipping in November, but they're announcing the G2 Omnicept, which is going to have a few key upgrades over the Reverb G2, including new sensors and cameras to deliver enhanced monitoring, such as eye movement, pupillometry, heart rate, and facial expression. So it's actually going to watch you while you're in the thing, which is weird. What's also weird is that HyperX is deciding that in case you want a microphone, you don't want it to be sleek and, you know, normal looking, but rather you actually want it to be RGB. So HyperX is releasing the Quadcast S, which is gonna be an RGB microphone, which according to their spec sheet versus the uh, versus the original Quadcast, the only thing that's different is this power consumption right here, but essentially they look to be the same exact microphone, but now in RGB, so you know it's a gamer microphone. And I know that gaming on Intel's next gen Tiger Lake is a thing because it's really good for IGPU and companies are now upgrading their product portfolio to have Tiger Lake. Anyways, Lenovo is gonna upgrade their ThinkPad X1 Nano, which is gonna be their smallest and thinnest X1 yet. Coming in at just under two pounds. Also, they are now pre-ordering the X1 Fold, which they're saying is the world's first foldable PC, which Lenovo. That's a fold, just so we're clear. But they're making the distinction because it's all screen, my friends. It's just like a Galaxy Fold 2, but just was with a crease in the middle and giant. And it's a 13 inch 2K OLED display starting at $2,500 and going up to three grand, depending on which spec sheet you want to do. Oh man, that's a, that's a wild wild laptop at, at very expensive pricing. But hopefully Silverstone's not gonna launch their new line of AIO coolers at an expensive price because they look beautiful. Look at the gemstones. These are gonna fit right in with the G-Skill Trident Z Royals as well as the Palette Game Rock GPUs that are out there. So Silverstone coming in with, I mean, I guess this is in the whole like crystal look. This is like the 85th product that's dropping with this. I'm confused, why? And why is what Google says when they release a flagship phone, they say, why did we do all of that? We could do something completely different. And that's what the Pixel 5 is, got announced yesterday. It has everything that we've initially been expecting, including the Snapdragon 765G, IP68 water and dust resistance, 4K 60 FPS recording on all of that, as well as 128 gigs of storage, a 4,000 milliamp hour battery, all of that, but then also includes an ultra wide camera, which just, just to be clear, they said last year was stupid. They said nobody would use an ultra wide camera, which is why they put a telephoto. But this year, well, apparently it's not stupid. So they dropped the telephoto, and put in an ultra wide, which duh, after having an ultra wide lens, it just makes so much more sense on a phone. You can digitally zoom in two times and you're not gonna lose that much fidelity, right? But you can't actually, you know, zoom out on your phone. It, the ultra wide makes so much more sense than a telephoto. I don't understand why they even, had, why we had to go for the Pixel 4 in the first place. Anyways, the Pixel 5 looking to be a good one starting at 699 and also these new Pixel devices that got announced, including the 4A 5G, are gonna be the first phones to have the Hold For Me Assistant feature, which Google announced at Google I.O. Over two years ago, which this is a far cry from the fact that we're supposed to have AI who actually does booking and talking for us. This just uh, lets you know when somebody comes back on the line because because it's AI detection. I don't know. Cool, bro. What's not cool? or is depending on your taste. The new Spider-Man remaster for the PS5 recasts Peter Parker, which is this is the first time I'm hearing of this in a video game where a remaster, like actual remaster, only like two years from when the game came out, just completely changes the look of the main character in the dang game. And he's essentially Tom Holland. Like this is more mid twenties grad student look. And then this is definitely Tom Holland uh it's peter parker vibes that's going on there apparently insomniac saying that this is so that they could fit the voice actor a little bit better and it's gonna make things better for the future of the franchise sure i just man i've never seen something like this before what are you doing insomniac 
but I know what I'm doing on the PS5. Gran Turismo 7 is going to be on my hotly anticipated list of games I want to pick out. And they updated a few things on the product page for it. Oh, it just looks so beautiful. Them announcing that there's going to be a 60 FPS 4K target, which they're going for, as well as the fact that there shouldn't be any loading times when selecting from cars, adaptive triggers, haptic feedback, and the Tempest 3D audio technology, which just, oh, I want this. It does seem to be like a really, really good game to try out the DualSense controller and the whole like ear tracking thing that Mark Cerny talked about, which, yeah, nobody's talking about that with the PS5. They announced that they want to scan your ears. Where'd that conversation go? OK, they want to they want to they want to they want to look at that. Either your ear, your uh, cochlea. That's what it's called, right? Cochlea. Not cochlea. What's wrong with me? Cochlea. Cochlea. Got it. Speaking of tickling your cochlea, Twitch wants to do that with their new streaming music service that they're going to be offering to Twitch streamers. Soundtracks by Twitch is in beta, but it's going to have over a million songs from 30 different independent labels for you to get music and not get that DMCA takedown that's happening on Twitch. This is a creator friendly move that I actually kind of appreciate and makes a lot of sense, but this doesn't seem to be the thing that they should be working on. How about building trust with your streamers, building uh, rapport, you know, communicating about things such as banning one of your largest streamers without any word on what the hell happened there? Maybe just an update. Why did you do that? Kind of, I, I, I know it's not like your thing to just discuss that, but it kind of doesn't create a good sense of you're going to take care of the people on your platform when we can just be yeeted at a moment's notice. Anyways, come follow us, twitch.tv forward slash UF Disciple. And Speaking of things that came out two years ago, but hearkening back to the Google I.O. thing. Anyways, Atari VCS apparently are shipping out very soon. We got got images that they are being made in the factory. As you can see here, they're ready to go. Apparently shipping sometime in the near future. I think that's on track with the fact that they said that they're coming out in November. But Atari VCS could be your thing. And what could also be your thing is you surviving 2020 with a beautiful Meth Cheetah mug. Check it out at the link in the video description. I survived 2020, my friends do it and do nothing else with your day because hot news is over so just go curl up in a ball in a corner cry a little bit okay but don't don't cry too much get a pillow make yourself nice and comfy throw on a blanket turn down the ac if you're in a warm temperature if you're not if it's cold outside open up the windows just get all snuggle and buggle and just wait for tomorrow because we'll be back goodbye